Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to commemorate Zach Didier, a beloved member of our community in Rockland who tragically passed away from fentanyl shortly after Christmas Day a little over two years ago in 2020. I'd also like to take a moment to introduce the American people to Zach's parents, Laura Didier and Chris Didier, who are with us today in the gallery. I was honored to have Laura and Chris as my guests for last night's State of the Union. They have worked tirelessly to honor Zach's life through raising awareness of the fentanyl crisis and have undoubtedly saved many lives. This is Zach. He was 17 years old, a senior at Whitney High School. He was an Eagle Scout, soccer player, star of the high school musical, straight-A student. He had just applied to college, and his parents had to go through the gut-wrenching experience of watching acceptance envelopes arrive from California's leading universities. I'd like to take a moment to offer a moment of silence to honor the memory and life of Zach Didier. Zach had no history of drug use. He was the type of young man that parents hope their child will become, and I know how proud of him Chris and Laura are. His story shows that the poison of fentanyl is a risk to everyone. No community is safe from it. No family can be unaware of the danger. Fentanyl has become the leading cause of death for Americans ages 18 to 45. More than car accidents, more than suicides, more than anything. Over 73,000 Americans died from fentanyl in this past year. That amounts to 200 deaths a day, about one every seven minutes. The lethality of fentanyl uh, is unlike any other drug. It's about 100 times more potent than morphine. Two milligrams, or the amount that fits on the tip of a pencil, is a deadly dose. And it's now very commonly added to street pills, such that 98% of pills sold on the street are fake, and by some estimates, 60% have the potential to be lethal. Many of the victims are teenagers, young people, people with no prior drug use. And there are many causes connected to this, of course, uh, mental health, uh, teenagers who are just stressed with the stresses of school, uh, certainly the isolation during uh, the whole COVID era. Um, they often uh, purchase these fake pills on social media, over the internet. The dealers sometimes drive and deliver them straight to the victims' homes. So what can we do? Well, the first and most important thing, perhaps, is to continue to raise awareness. Many Americans aren't aware of the severity of this crisis until it's too late. Chris and Laura Didier have done 45 school assemblies this year alone, reaching tens of thousands of students and families and have saved many lives I know in the process. Every school across the country needs to have a strategy for making students and family aware of the dangers. Secondly, we need to do much more to prevent fentanyl from flowing into this country. We know that the, that the southern border is a primary source. In 2022 alone, the DEA sees 379 million lethal doses of fentanyl. That is enough to kill every single American. Securing the border would diminish the availability of fentanyl, make it more difficult to traffic into the United States. Finally, we need to hold dealers accountable. We need appropriate criminal laws to punish those who peddle life-ending pills to unsuspecting victims. We need to have consequences that are commensurate with the gravity, the evil of the offense, to deter those who would prey on innocent Americans. This requires state and federal governments to revisit their drug laws in many cases. It also requires prosecutors to make full use of the tools at their disposal. I want to applaud Plaster County District Attorney Morgan Geyer from my district, who's provided a roadmap by charging fentanyl dealers with murder, because that's what it is. The good news is we are seeing growing momentum for addressing this crisis with the seriousness that it deserves and requires. And I'm grateful that President Biden devoted a portion of his State of the Union address to addressing it. I'm grateful that Chris and Laura Didier were here uh, last night to see that, because they have played such a large role uh, in working with many other families who have lost loved ones in raising public consciousness. So now, Mr. Speaker, is the time that we need to follow words with action. I look forward to working with the President and everyone in this Congress on a bipartisan basis to help our country turn the corner on this crisis. Thank you, and I yield.